What's up everybody, this is Battlefield Joe 97 here. It's been a while since I've been on camera. You can clearly see a lot has changed in the shelf along with me for like the past months or so. But don't worry, I'm back I'm making videos on camera and I'm gonna go for some updates but that'll be at the end of the video because I have like I've literally have not done any gaming pickup videos I believe since December or so. So for the time being I'm gonna be covering physical games instead of digital games like right now because I'm not even going to be doing digital games in the future for these you know gaming pickup videos I'm mainly going to be talking about physical games because with this new security job that I got since February I've literally been buying so much shit and you can clearly tell from the length of this video and how much I'm going to show you right here and right now from the month of January to March and at the end of this month in April I'm going to be doing my April gaming pickup video along with my <laughs> My long delayed awaited top five top five games of 2015. Originally it was going to be top 10, but you know I've been playing a lot. I played a lot of okay games in 2015. Originally they were going to be at the top 10, like Batman: Arkham Knight, and to be honest, it's not top five material or in top 10 material. So you're going to at least see my top five games of 2015 late, of course, at least sometime this month. Along at the end of this month, my April gaming pickup video. So now let's get. Let's get rolling right here. From January, I only had one game. I didn't buy this. It was a gift for my birthday, a late birthday gift. And that was Yokai Watch for the Nintendo 3DS. Developed by Level 5 and published by Nintendo. It you, there's a lot of comparisons between Pokemon with this game, and to be quite frank, it's a lot easier than Pokemon, but it has a lot of a lot of charm. It's quirky as all hell. And while there is some localization of this game not being in Japan, but some kind of town that is not Japan exactly but overall the game is simplistic it's fun and definitely has a lot of character and charm to it so if you definitely love Pokemon or definitely love like monster quirky um, kind of games I definitely highly recommend Yokai Watch for the Nintendo 3DS definitely need to finish it I'm halfway through the game I kind of stopped because I have so much shit on here I'll definitely show so yeah this was the only one I got in January but <laughs> you're gonna see what I got from later in the month so now I'm only going to be um, covering the February stuff that I got, and that is for the PlayStation 3 Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix, the greatest hits thing. I got this for $20 brand new in a local mom and pop store that is like near me, and definitely looks nice with my you know 1.5 HD Remix of the greatest hits um, version. And to be quite honest here, while I do have this game and I bought this since February, I have not even put this on my PS3 yet because I'm still playing the 1.5 HD Remix Collection. But I definitely, you know, bought this just in case so that when I finish with 1.5 HD Remix, I can immediately put 2.5 HD on my PS3 immediately. But for the time being, I'm kind of halfway through the original Kingdom Hearts. I'm doing a 100% completion, but with this job or whatever, I'm just going to go through the game and just play like rechain of memories and stuff like that but definitely as a Kingdom Hearts fan I bought this because I really love the cover and you know something to back me up when I finish 1.5 HD Remix sometime in the future and along with just only one game in February I've also got an Amiibo and this was an Amiibo that I wanted to get since I believe last year when this was released and that of course is the Shovel Knight Amiibo only works for the Wii U and the 3DS version of Shovel Knight and as you can see, I still have not opened it yet because at this point, I don't really like to open Amiibos anymore. There's not really much of an incentive for me to actually get these items or bonuses that Nintendo or other developers have put into. And really, I just look into collectibles. So until Nintendo, you know, copies a bit more with Disney Infinity or Skylanders, I really don't see any reason to open and use them in games. So definitely, as someone who loves Shovel Knight, I have the PS4 version physically as I've shown in my previous gaming pickup videos, along with having them digitally on my Wii U and 3DS, I fucking love Shovel Knight. Definitely one of the best indie games of all time. Definitely one of the best. So yeah, that's it for February, but you're going to see a fucking like massive shift at how much shit that I got. So now we're going to go into the portable side. I definitely bought a lot of games on the portable side. Now I bought like three D Nintendo DS games, and that was WarioWare DIY or Do It Yourself. Pokemon Black version, which I will completely be honest here, I did play from Pokemon Generations 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then I kind of just skipped the 5th generation because I was burned out of Pokemon from playing Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, and yeah, I just was really tired of Pokemon in general in the Diamond and Pearl era, and just skipped the 5th generation from Black and White and Black and White 2, 
But then I came back to Pokemon with the sixth generation with Pokemon Y, and I definitely have Omega Rupee somewhere in the shelf. But yeah, and to be other completely honest, I still have not put this on my 3DS or my DSi because I have so much shit, and I don't know, when I finish Pokemon Omega Ruby, then I'll immediately put this on my 3DS or my DSi because really, I really want to experience the fifth generation because from a lot of, you know, friends that I know who've played this game, definitely is one of the better generations next to the second generation, which definitely has my interest. But for the time being, I want to finish Pokemon Omega Ruby on my 3DS in order to go back to the past. And along with that is a used copy of Mario Kart DS from GameStop, which is rare because, you know, most GameStops that I've gone to, they mostly have the DS games in their chips and have like have like a really big price to them like 10 to 20 to 30 to even 40 dollars with the pokemon games which i find to be ridiculous at that point because if i'm going to buy a portable game i at least want the case itself so it was at least good that um a GameStop that was near a nintendo world in manhattan they still sell ds games in their cases dent or not and while there is some dents to this um used copy of mario kart ds on the back side it definitely is intact i had to delete the previous owner's safe file but yeah Definitely see the GameStop receipt here. Um, the manual is intact. There's no like coffee stains or whatever. And definitely um, one of the best Mario Kart games next to Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 8, Double Dash, and even 64. I definitely love Mario Kart. You can tell from that. And from the 3DS side, I was trying cheap with the 3DS from getting the Nintendo Select versions of Ocarina of Time 3D. And Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Yeah, there's a 3D for these remakes. Now, I really wanted to get Ocarina of Time 3D since I had my 3DS back in 2014. But, you know, it was out of print at that point. And if only I could find any of those games physically, even a local mom and pop store, it was impossible. But, you know, thanks to Nintendo re-releasing the game for like $20 brand new. And, you know, Target. I got this like in Target. Along with like Big Hero 6 and, on, and Big Hero 6 and the Spider-Man Trilogy on Blu-ray. Definitely is a nice, yeah, there it is, the target receipt for Ocarina of Time 3D, along with Big Hero 6 and the Spider-Man Trilogy on Blu-ray. But yeah, Ocarina of Time 3D is definitely like one of my favorite remakes of all time. Definitely improves upon the game. The graphics look much better, much crisper. Definitely looks like the original concept art of the game. And I really love the addition, even the gyroscope, which I'm really surprised because I don't really like motion controls, especially in a portable um, setting and if I'm at a bus, it's rackety as all hell. And while it is the case in certain situations where I'm in the bus, I definitely really, really love this remake. So if you have not gotten this yet on the 3DS or you would not have experienced Ocarina of Time, this is definitely the definitive version, I'll tell you here. Unless, you know, they make an HD version of it on Wii U or NX. But I doubt they do it on Wii U, maybe the NX. And yeah, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. Now I have the original Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii over here. And while it was a fun game to play on the consoles, I definitely really loved playing it on the go. And while they did have to scale things down a bit in order to have this on the 3DS, I definitely still think it's a very good game to play it portably on the go. And a lot of the features added into it, I I just really love from it. As you can tell, I'm, I love Donkey Kong so much. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. And definitely is a nice, you know, game added into the collection for, you know, my Donkey Kong um, collection. So yeah, the 3DS and DS side was very few, but you'll definitely see a lot on the PlayStation. Um, so around this time in March, I found out that a local mom and pop store, um, the third one, I believe, where I lived, called Game City, was closing its doors around where I live in order to move to upstate. So they literally had a 50% off on everything they had. And <laughs> as you can tell right now, I bought so much shit on the PSP side, it was ridiculous. Like every single day or at least every single week when I got my paycheck, I literally went into that store to, you know, look through shit, negotiate with the cashier, and just bought a lot, a lot of stuff. And you could definitely see, at least from the lighting, that I still have not opened any of some of these games here. So you're just gonna see me saying, oh, I got this, and I got this. You're just gonna see me flip through these a lot. And one of those is Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max for the PlayStation Portable. I definitely opened this up, and it really is a fun version of Alpha 3. Definitely added a bit new characters for 
this version of Alpha 3, and while it looks exactly how it is in the arcade, it definitely is a fun game to play on the PSP. I don't know if I say the definitive version of it, but it definitely is worthwhile to have on the collection, especially if you love Street Fighter and the Alpha series. And of course, um, is Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Freedom, and Monster Hunter Freedom 2. As you can see right now, I have not opened Monster Hunter Freedom 2, and it sells the price tag. And if you heard me before, it was a 50% off deal in, you know, Game City. So I got this for like what five dollars or so. And for brand new, shrink wrapped, is really a goddamn steal. But yeah, I played a bit of Monster Hunter Freedom. It's a bit clunkier compared to the newer Monster Hunter games, but it definitely has the heart and spirit of the franchise. If you love these kind of games and you have not played Freedom, definitely pick it up a go. I'm still having a bit um, adjusting to this game, especially since the newer games are much more friendly for newcomers compared to this. But overall, definitely a worth a steal, especially for brand new. And this as well. And these games as well. The Daxter, the Greatest Hits Collection, and... Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier, both on the PSP now. I believe both of them were like $10, so for 50% off, I got $5 each for them, and it was a nice deal. I have still not opened Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier, so I can't really say my opinions on it yet, but I just bought it anyway because, to be quite frank, I still have not played any of the Jack and Daxter games. This is like, what, the first game? Oh, wait, not the first game, the second game. The first one I played was Jack X, the racing game on the PlayStation 2. This is the second game in the franchise that I've played, and that's Daxter. And it's definitely a fun platformer on the PSP. It definitely utilizes the controls well. The graphics are nice. The frame rate is a bit of a problem here and there, but overall it has the charm, it has the quirk, and definitely make me want to get the Jack and Daxter collection on PS3. I was going to get it at least for, say, Fido, but there's a lot of like bad reviews for it. But for the time being, Daxter, if you have not played this yet, if you have a PSP, definitely get it. It's really goddamn good. And yeah, everything else, at least for these four games, I have not opened them opened the yet, so I'm just going to go rapid fire. Um, Secret Agent Clank for, what was it, $5.99, so like, what, 3 or $2.50, brand new, shrink wrapped. Final Fantasy II for $3 or $2.50, or whatever. Um, Resistance Retribution for $5.99, 50% off, you know what it is, doing math. Uh, Killzone Liberation. Now I got this game digitally when they were doing the, um, so when it was doing the apology when the PlayStation Network store was the PlayStation Network was hacked, so they literally gave the option for free games for their um, audience, and I picked Killzone Liberation along with Pursuit Force for the free games to have for the PSP, and I couldn't resist having a physical copy, so at least I can play Killzone Liberations on another system, which I'm going to show later in this video, and I played this on my PSP systems. So definitely, you know, a win-win for me. And a used copy, $6.99, you know, half 50% off of that, is the Capcom Classics Collection Remix. Definitely a lot of older games, especially the original Street Fighter, which, <laughs> yeah, you can see why they were doing a lot of versions of Street Fighter 2 and not Street Fighter 1, because Street Fighter 1 is literally fucking garbage, I'll tell you that. They could even fix the game up in this collection, along with the original Strider, Ultimate Ghost and Goblin. Oh no, that's a sneak peek of Ultimate Ghost and Goblins. But they at least have. No, none of the Ghost and Goblin games, but they definitely have the original Street Fighter, Captain Commando, Bionic Commando, Final Fight, definitely a Strider, a lot of classic Capcom games. To be quite frank, I still have not put up the game um, just yet, but yeah, it definitely is a fun little collection that I couldn't resist even use. And it, through a little dent or so, definitely is a nice collection to have. And I couldn't resist this, it was brand new, and I do love Indiana Jones and Legos, and that is Lego Indiana Jones, the original adventures for PSP, the greatest hits collection. And to be quite frank, it's not really a bad game to play on the PSP, considering how the older Lego games, they didn't really allow you to um, control the camera with a second analog, since the PSP didn't have the second analog stick, or, you know, whatever they call it, the nub. It definitely is a nice game to fit on the PSP, and, you know, it, it's like playing the PlayStation 2 version of LEGO Indiana Jones. And you get to play the three classic Indiana Jones films, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and The Last Crusade. So, definitely, it's a fun little game to have on the go. It's like playing the PS2 version, and I love Indiana Jones, so that's something. And, yeah, this one's still brand new. What was it for... $10, 50% off, it was 5 and that is Silent Hill Origins. Now, I don't know why I bought this, because I played a bit of the Silent Hill games, but I'm not much of a huge fan of it. Might have been because I played the games that were after Silent Hill 3 and 4, 
But yeah, I don't know if I really want to open this yet unless I play the older games. But yeah, I heard a lot of bad things for the HD collection, so I don't know if I really want to get myself into it. But I don't know, maybe later down the road you may see me buy me a PS2 or an Xbox so I can play the original versions of those games. But yeah, I'm mumbling about it because I really don't, I really can't say my opinion on this because I haven't even opened this yet and put it on my PSP. But yeah, definitely bought this for five dollars or so, so it's nice. So yeah, you definitely tell March was the year of the PSP or at least the portable side of Sony because literally all of this shit was 50% off from Game City. So rest in peace, Game City. You gave me a lot of shit for the PSP collection. And yeah. To continue with the portable side, with how much money I made as a security guard, even without overtime, I literally bought a system. And it's a system that I think some people may think that why you bought this if you hated it, which is ridiculous. And that, of course, is the PlayStation Vita, the 2001 model that had like one gigabyte internal storage, which I'll get into that later down the road or maybe with the April Gaming Pickup video. We'll talk about the gigabytes for the system, but for the time being, I absolutely love the system. It's definitely over there. I could show it right now, but I don't want to like waste any minutes or so. But definitely, it's a fun little investment. Definitely for hardcore fans who want to play console gaming on the go. And yeah, I was just in that St. Patrick's mood and bought this game along with Persona 4 Golden, a game that a lot of people in my friends list who have a Vita can't stop talking about this. So Chris Demba, Neo Game Spark, this is for you, man. I bought this Vita and bought the Persona 4 Golden, and I was thinking of you, man. Thinking of you. And yeah, as someone who played a bit of Persona 3, uh, rented it on the PSP from Gamefly, and playing Persona 4 Golden a bit, still have not finished it. I believe I'm halfway through it, but I don't know for certain because of how long RPGs are typically. But for the time being, Persona 4 Golden definitely has a lot of charm, has a lot of character, definitely has an atmosphere to it, and the combat is really intense at times, and yeah, definitely an underrated gem or at least an underrated remake for a portable system that not many people have. So, definitely recommend Persona 4 Golden if you get a Vita. Definitely a perfect one, especially if you get this kind of model that has like one gigabyte of eternal storage. You can play this game immediately once you plop it into the Vita. And also, along with getting this as a Metal Gear fan, I instantly couldn't, you know, regret getting the Metal Gear Solid HD collection that includes four games, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, the HD versions of them in the HD collection, along with, you know, since the subsistence version of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, it includes Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, the MSX2 versions of it. So yeah, you're getting four games in one for this compilation. And this was one of those Vita games I bought in Game City, which I think it was $15, and they had a 50% off of it, so, and it was brand new. It was shrink wrap, so it was definitely a nice investment to have, especially considering now I love the Metal Gear franchise and I have like what three different ways to play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater on my PS3, on my 3DS, and definitely on the Vita. So that's at least something. So yeah, <laughs> March was definitely a year for Sony portable systems. I have like what I believe 10 plus PSP games and two Vita games and a system for the Vita. So yeah, it definitely was a really crazy year. Yeah, we're like almost like 20 minutes or so, and it's I still haven't finished yet. And yeah, along with it, um, these are like other offerings that I got from local mom and pop store. This one, of course, another one from Game City, and that is Crimson Skies, The High Road to Revenge. A really fun arcade-style um, arcade game for the original Xbox. It was a sequel to a PC game, but it definitely is fun. It's charming. It's, it has a... It, it's definitely really nice. If you love the humor and the style of Uncharted, you definitely would be a fan of this game. And definitely if you love Star Fox and the kind of aerial combat, you're definitely going to love Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. And this thing is compatible with the Xbox 360. So if you don't have an original Xbox and you have an Xbox 360, original or slim, you can just buy a copy of this game and just plop it in the 360 and you're good to go. So, you know, you may have some emulation problems here or there. So, yeah. Definitely, Crimson Sky is a fun game. If you love the humor or the style of Uncharted, you'll definitely get into this with the story. And if you love the aerial combat of, say, Star Fox, definitely, definitely a game that you shouldn't, like, let go. Truly underrated. And, of course, um, this is, like, one of the closest mom-and-pop stores that next to the train station where I go to. And that is the limited collector's edition of Halo 2. I couldn't get up to it, even with, say, a few stains in the steel book and, what was it? 
um, the right side of it being broken, but you know, if you put it in a shelf like this, for example, you don't really don't see any problems with the case. But even if you get rid of, say, the scratches on the front of this sleeve or whatever, it's just a steel book, you definitely know it's Halo 2. Definitely looks nice, and you can see a few dents here and there, but overall, I got rid of all the coffee stains inside and out with alcohol and water. And it definitely is really goddamn nice, and for, what, $20 or so, to have not only the game, Halo 2, but even the second disc, which is very rare, at least, you know, going to GameStop or any other local mom and pop store. So definitely, it's a nice investment for $20 for the limited collector edition of Halo 2. And it definitely will look nice, because I'm trying to rebuild the my Halo collection physically, since I have it on digitally on my 360, I definitely would like to have it physically in order to have more space for games of gold games. So yeah, two games for March for the original Xbox. And now for the Nintendo side, for the Wii U and the Wii. And I only honestly bought one game for the Wii U, and that of course is Twilight Princess HD, the Amiibo bundle slash soundtrack slash poster bundle that I got from Nintendo World, or at least rebranded as Nintendo New York. So this is the Amiibo, I still have not opened it, I don't give a shit about the extra Cave of Shadows dungeon or whatever, I'm just going to have it in the box, along with the soundtrack, still have not opened it yet, I do not want to open it, I'm really fix it in on that, and the poster is somewhere in this room, but I'm not going to go look for it, and yeah, this is the game itself, and yeah, if you have not played Twilight Princess yet, I definitely do recommend getting it. But I don't know if the HD version is not really a 100% conversion of it. Like it's not like say playing a PS2 game and then playing and then playing it again as a PS3 HD remaster. Definitely still has a few muddy textures here or there. But overall, I love Twilight Princess a bit. It's truly really an underrated game. I thought I didn't like it at first when I played it on the Wii, but now I truly love it on the Wii U. So definitely, it's a nice little investment. You got the Amiibo, the soundtrack, the poster, and the game itself. Definitely need to play a bit more of this. I'm kind of like still in the beginning of the game. But, you know, I have a lot of shit on me. <laughs> I'll tell you that. And, of course, on the original Wii side, $20 for a Nintendo Select version of Animal Crossing City Folk. I'll be honest here, I only played it like one day Easter, um, Easter Sunday. And I still have not played it yet. I don't know if the mayor of the city would be mad at me. But, overall... I love Animal Crossing New Leaf on my 3DS, and I thought, you know what, since this game was going to come out in the Nintendo Select, along with, say, Ocarina of Time 3D and Donkey Kong Country Return 3D, I thought, hey, why not get this on the original Wii? And my local mom and pop store, they got this brand new, so I just picked it up for $20, and I, you know, sort of loved it for the one day game's worth uh, it got. <clears throat> And of course, this is like one of those other purchases from Game City. This was like, what, $1.99? Took 50% off. I literally had this for cents. And, you know, because it's a badly um, dented cover of Big Brain Academy, the Wii Degree. Now, I love this game, and I used to own it on the Wii. But, you know, I bought it again. But, yeah, you can definitely tell from the cover, it's really dented as all hell. But who knows? I'm just going to buy um, a replacement cover. Um, yeah, a replacement cover for the on eBay. Definitely the, the disc is still not scratched, definitely brand new, and still has the instruction manuals, not problems here and there, so that's something. Just need to replace the case, or the cover. Still have not put it on my Wii or Wii U yet, but as someone who used to love the game when I had, like, you know, friends and family over, definitely add it into the collection if you love party games. So that's it on the Wii side, and definitely... Was it? I only bought like one PS3 and 360 game and one PS2 game. I'm just going to show the PS2 game. And that, of course, of course, from Game City. And that is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty for the PS2. Now, this is the original print of it. It's not the greatest hit collection. It's not the subsistence version that added a bit more content from the original Xbox version. This is the original cover, the original print of it. And yeah, while it is a bit dented, you can clearly see from the lighting over here. And there are some problems with the manual, like some coffee stain. Definitely the disc is brand new and stuff like that. And while I don't have a PlayStation 2 on me, and I can just play Metal Gear Solid 2, the subsisted version, on the Vita or the PS3, I definitely bought this because I freaking love Metal Gear. Definitely one of my top 10 franchises of all time. And, yeah, I definitely love the cover of it. It's intriguing, and it grabbed me by the eye, and, you know, I got this literally for cents, along with, say, the Metal Gear Solid HD collection on Vita. It's definitely um, one of those last purchases from Game City, along with the Xbox 360 version of 
Far Cry compilation that includes Far Cry 2, Far Cry 3, and a and a disc version of Blood Dragon. Now, if you remember uh, my previous like top you know top videos, I had Blood Dragon up in my top five or top three. Definitely one of my favorite games, I believe, in 2013 or 2014. And owning a disc version of it is really a goddamn treat. Like, let me just get two and three out of there and get my get the one thing I honestly bought for for like fifteen dollars and seventy eight cents a disc version of Blood Dragon. I absolutely love it. Definitely sucks that Ubisoft didn't, you know, make Blood Dragon 2 for Far Cry 4, but whatever, at least I get to own a classic digital title now on disc for this collection. And honestly, I still have not put this on my 360 yet because I've been playing a lot of original Xbox games like Halo and other digital titles from Games of Gold, but definitely I've just bought this because of Blood Dragon. I fucking love Blood Dragon. <laughs> And for the last game for March is Spider-Man 3 for the PlayStation 3. Now, this is a funny story here. I was in my local GameStop, and normally with Marvel, you know, Marvel or Spider-Man games, definitely see a lot of coffee stains. It looks ugly, like really sticky substance shit that really turns me off, even if the game is in low price and I can get it. But one of the rare occurrences, you know, except uh, minus the dent over here, if you can see from the lighting, the game is essentially brand new and even includes the manual itself. Well, you know, somewhat of a manual. Because around that time, there was basically an instructional booklet like this. Literally, oh no, it's not an instructional book. Like, it literally is a small, small manual, like you can see right here. And I only paid for like $20 for it, but I don't know if I regret the purchase. Because while it is a brand new copy and I was allured by it, because, you know, the PlayStation 3 font, the, you know, the Spider Man font used for the PlayStation 3 font literally has an intriguing um, cover design for me. It definitely looks a bit nicer than, say, the Wii or the Xbox 360 version, at least the case of it. Spider Man 3, the game is rushed, it's buggy, and, you know, recently replaying Spider Man 2 on my Xbox, or the Xbox 360 with the Xbox version. Definitely makes Spider-Man 3 really, really underperform, just like the Spider-Man 3, the movie itself. Definitely, at least, is somewhat better than the movie itself. I'll give it that. So, yeah, for $20 use, for exactly like a brand new copy of Spider-Man 3, definitely something for a Spider-Man fan like me. So, yeah, that's it for all the games that I got from January, February, and March. And we have Amiibos. Yeah, I know, I still have a lot of Amiibos. Now, all these were... That I got from March. Pikachu, Charizard, and Ryu. All of those from March itself. That's it, everybody. This is my gaming pickup video from January to March. Expect an April gaming pickup video at the end of this month, along with my top five games of 2015. Like, favor, subscribe, comment what games that I got, you know, from January to March that you like, or games that you recommend me getting, because I can definitely go for a lot of, like, hunting for these kind of games, because I'm really an addict for this kind of shit. And yeah, I definitely really love getting these kind of games for the collection. This is Battlefield Joe 97. Catch you guys later.